Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new year of reviews. And what better way to start 2018 than with a cuddly little bear from Peru with a taste for marmalade. Will this long-awaited sequel to the beloved first film be as charming and delightful? Let's take a look. Here is Paddington 2. I thought the first Paddington was very sweet and worthy adaptation of Michael Bond's classic books. The sequel, I feel, is even better. We really see with this movie how Paddington has had an influence over Windsor Gardens and the Brown family, with the filmmakers having one delightful sequence after another of that bear being a good neighbor. That warm, fuzzy feeling is all over this movie, and I think the animators deserve to be commended for what a lovely job they've done with Paddington. The slapstick moments are note-perfect, with some incredible choreography. Beyond the humor, the story is really well put together, with Paddington going to prison and the Browns doing everything to try and prove his innocence. The prison scenes have almost a Wes Anderson feel in how everything is framed. Hugh Grant seems to delight in playing this crafty actor, Brendan Gleeson brings some solid layers to his prison cook, and Sally Hawkins is utterly charming as Mrs. Brown. There are these little character details Paddington 2 introduces early on that are not just there to give everyone a quirk. They are important story pivotal elements that add to the world director Paul King and his team have created. And I keep mentioning words like delightful and charming, which permeate through the entire film. It's great to see a film like this where almost every scene is sweet, natured, and teaches warmth and kindness, but not in a schmaltzy way. It feels natural to this world and a lesson in that we need more folks out there like Paddington who can brighten one's day and bring a smile. Paddington 2 is a wonderful way to start the year and I cannot wait for more cinematic adventures with even more marmalade sandwiches. Next up, Liam Neeson finds himself on a train ride that is not part of his usual route. He is The Commuter. This film joins the long line of recent action movies where super serious Liam Neeson finds himself in a location and attempts to fought some bad guys. The setup starts off promisingly enough with a clever montage of Neeson's many mornings and we also get an excellent performance from Vera Famiga as the person who gets the plot rolling. She does a lot with a small role and again shows she's an actress who deserves meatier parts. To the commuter's credit, it seems to know how silly the premise is, and Neeson has played these roles enough time that I, oddly enough, buy the more suspension of disbelief moments in this world. For the most part, though, the film attempts to play as a mystery as Neeson goes from train car to train car, trying to figure out who the stranger is that he's supposed to find. The movie throws a bunch of red herrings your way, and the other passengers fit into neat little archetypes. There isn't as enough tension as you might expect, from this premise and it does start to go off the rails in the third act. Once we find out who it is, there's a sense of just waiting to wrap things up. Oh, and we also get Sam Neill and Patrick Wilson in small roles. I hope they were paid well for those two days of work, although I'm not going to complain about Sam Neill showing up in something. This will probably most appeal to fans of Liam Neeson's previous action films. It's serviceable enough, although I would not rush out to the train station to go see it. Thank you for watching this week's reviews, and I'll see you next time.